Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I bought a new car. Oh, wait. Did I tell you it's full electric? Watch this video. So I'm heading up to get my new car. I'm driving up in the Aurus. Um, originally I wanted the Aurus and there was none available. And I spoke to Alex at AMT and he was like, Jan, I've got this available, do you want this instead? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll have that, I'll have that. And then what happened is, this car came available as well and I was like, what do I do? So I ended up buying this and buying the car that we're on our way to right now. So you might be asking, why, why electric, Jan? Like you're the, you're the petrol man, you're the car that has all the gas guzzlers. I just fancied something different. It was available and um, I like change. You know me, I like to change my cars all the time. Obviously, I'll probably have this car a week as you look upset at home. So I've got the opportunity to own it. So I bought it. All you guys at home are saying, you're boring and they put like the snooze things. Oh, I was obvious you're going to get the Aurus. Now what are you going to say? Well, what can you say now? My overall experience on electric cars is pretty much zero. The only time I ever drive them is on the drag races with car wow. Oh, good start. They're always fun. <laughs> They're always fun fast. Oh, that Tesla's so quick! <laughs> so yeah, I thought, I need to experience one for myself and see what they're actually like on a day-to-day -day basis. You can't think of an electric car without thinking of Tesla. Great car, performance, first ones to market, but... Today, I'm buying a Porsche. Right, so there she is for the first time. Um, I'm with Mark, who's actually gonna show me around the car. So Mark. Good morning, Annie. Morning. Um, just let them know at home who you are. Yeah, my name's Mark Lewis from Porsche Centre Silverstone, and here is your beautiful new Porsche Taycan Turbo S. Turbo S, had to be a Turbo S, of course. Well, let's run through some of the options. We've got to go to the electric port cover straight away. Yes, Yanni has gone electric. I don't know if that's a good idea. We'll soon find out when I run out of electric. But if you just touch your finger just to the right hand side, just under there, brilliant. You'll see your charging port. How cool is that? And that was an extra, wasn't it? That is an extra. Usually what you just push it like a picture. Yeah, flat. you just push it and it'll just open uh, from right to left. But that's the DC charging port. Um, you have AC on the other side. Okay. So at least you can charge on either side when you what's park What's DC, up. what's AC? So AC means normal charging, home charging. Yep. Uh, DC is more industrial um, or fast charging. Fast charging will take up to 80% in around half an hour. Okay, and just quickly, this does around 220 miles on a full charge? Yeah, 220 to 250 is official. It's not bad. Uh, Depends on how you drive it. 100 miles on a full um, on a full charge. Is there any limit on a launch control? How many times I can do a launch on this? You can do it unlimited. The calling on this car means you have the same performance every single launch. Car wow, I'll see you soon. Um, so, Mission E wheels. There are some different options, but these certainly look the best. And you're running on a 21 inch wheel. I'm not sure at home if you can see that. With the wheel, it's actually black and silver. When I saw a picture of this initially, it actually looks black and white, but it is black and silver. So if you can see that on camera, um, yeah, because if it was white, it'd look weird. The color of the car? Gentian blue metallic. There are various options that you can have in the color range. Gentian works really well, shows all the lines of this particular Porsche. How long do you think it'll be blue for? Till tomorrow. Not very long. It is nice and it is different to have a blue one, but yeah, I'm not sure it'll stay blue very, very long. We didn't talk about ceramic brakes. Huge. Porsche, as you know, they're huge. I've seen you driving them with uh, ceramics. They're different levels of that. Porsche are renowned for braking. PCCBs, as we like to call them, or Porsche ceramic composite brakes. They are traditionally yellow calipers, as you've seen them on most cars. They do have an option to have them now in uh, black. The yellow probably doesn't suit the blue. 
I would say even though I do like a nice bright caliper. This is a what, 2.2? 2 .2? 2 1.2, depending on the specification that you put on the car. It's a very heavy car for the size and shape, but why? The batteries, the batteries really, really weigh this car down. The charging and cooling that's around the batteries allow the performance to be as it is. 0 to 62, average 2.8 seconds. 2.8, not bad. 0 to 99. 6.1 seconds. That's rapid. Panoramic roof. Yeah, and it it's the full roof as well. Full roof, it doesn't open, but it's more the look, especially the spatial awareness when you're inside the car, allowing a lot more light to come in. Uh, lights on the front, LEDs as standard on all Porsches now, yep. uh, with the Taycan, and these have the frost blue effect, and they are a lot more sensitive. They're range assist, so high beam assist. It will back off if it sees a cyclist and extend the other one, so you can still see while you're driving, and it's all about your safety. So camera at the front, rear, and sides and the cameras on the sides are based into the bottom of the door mirrors for you. Because of the positioning of the batteries, you still have a decent sized boot. Oh wow, you do actually have a really, oh you get a good suitcase in there. Yeah, that's your mobile charger. And my new best friend that is, has anyone run out since you've given them the car? You can't run out as such. It will give you various warnings and if you're on route and you're running low, it will tell you where to go to charge. I believe you can run out because I play this game with petrol and it's like chicken and I look at my gauge, I'm like, I can go a bit more, I can go a bit more. Sometimes I lose that game. Um, hopefully I won't play the game with this, but I could be the first person then that could actually run out. At 40 miles, it's gonna start saying, you need to go here. Yeah, so it will just keep reminding me continuously. Absolutely. And the more fast charging ports that come into the UK, yeah. the better it's going to be for customers to fast charge. Worst case scenario, I'll be coming to one of your guys' houses at home and um, plugging it in for a quick charge. Anyone want to welcome me around? Quick coffee, biscuits? So you've got the highlighted rear Porsche badge on the back. The rear brake light goes across the rear of the car. Rear bumper, where's my big exhausts? They could put some fake ones in there for you, but they aren't there anymore. Okay. So it's all about drag now, so extending your range. Uh, obviously 220 average uh, up to, and as some customers done 250, but it depends on your driving and what you're using at the time inside the car. Oh, so the more stuff you use inside the car, the bigger the drain, the bigger the draw on the battery. You tend to be more conscious about the way you drive this car than you would do a 911 Turbo S. So when I drive, for example, my Ventador, I know that I can't go through six by sixes. So I need to think, okay, I need to plan my route. So I know if I'm gonna to go to Manchester and it's X amount of miles, I need to think, okay, let me plan my route. How long am I gonna be there for? Am I coming back the same day? Do I need to find a quick charge? And you said 25 minutes usually does a full charge at like a petrol station. Yeah, that will take the charge up to 80%. It will never do a full charge because it's a battery conditioner. It doesn't want to overheat the batteries at yeah. all. And for people at home that don't actually know, um, what does it cost to charge this? Like 10, 15 pounds? Being sensible and just charging it at home um, anywhere between 12 to 14 pounds to charge it, compared to what you would normally be putting in in a car like this, 120 pounds worth of super unleaded. Okay, and congestion charge free? Congestion charge free. Okay, you need that now. Seven days a week congestion charge. They have to get their money back somewhere for furlough. Thanks, Boris. Right, so. This is the steering wheel. Steering wheel. This turns and the car. It does turn the car. See that? Clever. I think the most important thing on this steering wheel is your sport response button. That tells you between sport, sport plus, how you would like to drive the car. Now you have within there two uh, small wheels on the steering wheel. If you roll the right one there, you can go into various elements, including navigation and sport chrono. And once you go into sport chrono and you go into launch, that's when the magic happens. That's when the magic happens. It's not his first rodeo, he's done this before, isn't he? Now, one of the main points in here, you can see electric sport sound. If we click on that, what will happen is when you're driving, you will have a tone of the car. Through the speakers? Oh, yeah, it, is, it allows people to hear you outside and you can hear more car-like inside. It's not a growl, but it's, it's good. When I picked up Morris the other day, I said, if it's got over 40 miles, it's like second hand, and that had 36. I'm looking down here, this has only got nine. That's cool, nine miles. 
that'll go very quickly up. So with recuperation accelerator, if you switch that on, it's then going to draw more power back into the car itself, extending your range. But you will feel that under the accelerator that it's drawing some power. So it's a bit, so it won't be as responsive as. It won't such. be as responsive. Okay, but it does. So if you're running out of um, electric and you think throw that in there, yep. just helps you get a little bit more just, out of just it, just to help you as well. So, so you, you can go. see there, within there, you've got your current charge, 198 miles, 94%. With the extra, you're probably looking around 220. So could that actually go up? That could go up. Okay, so you know, if you're driving a motorway in a petrol car, um, obviously the MPG, the miles per gallon, will go, will go up and down based on how you accelerate. And obviously you can see your petrol gauge go up and down, give you more miles. Is this the same with this? Exactly the same. So if I'm sitting on the motorway cruising at 70 mile an hour, I might get a bit more. Absolutely, and in front of you, as Porsche are very renowned with their heritage, is your digital speedo is always straight in front of you. Yeah. So depending on your driving, you could actually find it's going up rather than down. A sound system. Sound system on this car is Burmeister. You turn your music up, there's no distortion. And there's no engine noise to, um, <laughs> to worry about, so you don't need to turn it too high. Not as such, no. It is actually a four-seater, so it's actually a four-seater car, so you can put someone in the middle. But so it is a two plus one. Okay. So, so if you needed to get a third person in the back, you can. And put a seatbelt on them, which is fine. They are slightly higher than the front, so they can see see out of the car as well. And they look very comfortable, like your back, your, it's like you're sitting in a sports seat in the back, which is quite nice. Yeah, that's the great thing about it. Um, they, they fit your body really well. Okay, heated seats. Heated seats as well. Air cooled seats. Ventilated. Ventilated seats. Okay. So the last thing I want to show you is your puddle lights. Now you can see they say Porsche. Now they don't show you the Porsche crest. Okay, why? Because you don't stand on the Porsche crest. Okay, that's, that's, um, that's different. So that is my brand new Porsche Taycan Turbo S. Thank you so much to Mark first no, you're all, welcome. for a fantastic handover. I really appreciate it. Now you're probably thinking, the Porsche is here and the Urus is here. Is Gus or Elliot gonna drive the Urus home? No. However, I do have Alex from AMT. You guys see me post up and talk about AMT all the time. So let me introduce you to Alex, who's the sales manager at AMT. Alex, come in. How are you doing? We won't shake hands or do anything. Firstly, Alex is the sales manager at AMT. I know he looks very young and looks like a work experience child, but um, he's not. He's one of, the, <laughs> one of the big bosses there. Tell them about AMT. Of course, yeah. So AMT started in 1995 uh, as a car leasing broker. Fast forward 25 years, we have five locations across the UK. Uh, so we have Edinburgh, two in Leeds. So we've got headquarters, uh, showroom, and our vehicle rental site, Birmingham and London. So if you want to rent, lease, buy or sell a car, new, used, personal, business, car, van, Fiat 500 to a Ferrari, we can do it all. How many cars you got on the fleet? A couple of thousand and counting. A couple of thousand cars and counting. You actually might have seen on my Instagram, I said that someone can actually use a Range Rover for the weekend. I'm going to get the car from AMT. AMT's details are right here on the screen. Follow them on Instagram. I'm going to make a post in the next five days. All you have to do is follow them, okay, and comment and say why you want to actually have the car for the weekend. You'll know when I put that post up on their page. So we're just giving to you that for free. Just have that as love, okay? Anyway, so Alex, you're gonna drive my Urus home. So I'll hand you the, um, he's actually not gonna drive it home. He's gonna drive it back to Yanomai's, okay? That's it, he's insured, okay? Even though, as I said, he looks very, very young. I'm sure the comment section are gonna be saying how young you look. So now I've got two new cars and I've still got my Ventador SB Roadster. So that makes it three in total. That seems a lot of cars. I think I want to bring it back down to two. Um, Alex, stop trying to sell me any more cars. He keeps selling me cars, to be fair. Yeah, I can't promise anything. <laughs> he always comes up, there's always cars about, he's like, Jan, this car's just arrived. Do you want this? You might remember I was driving the Aston. He let me borrow the Aston for a while when I was in between cars. But anyway, Alex is going to drive back to Yanomai's. I'm going to drive back. So thank you so much for watching. That is the collection of my new full electric car. I've never had electric before. Thank you to Alex from AMT. And um, we'll see you soon, guys. Take care. Take Auntie Yanni, just sat in the uh, in Yanni's Urus. So we've we've known Yanni for 
not about 15 years now, he's been a long term customer of ours. Um, obviously, changes his cars every two minutes. Well, most people change their socks, to be fair. <laughs> really glad I could be here today to help him out. It's another car handed over, see what he fancies next. It's nothing quite like what I've experienced before in my life. I know I've done the drag race in this, but to actually drive it now normally on a road, you've got no noise. It's so smooth, so nice, very comfortable inside just silence you know if you don't want to play the music you can just drive in silence and get your thoughts thinking i don't know what happens every time i accelerate but the, the, the force that throws you back in the seat so let me just show you <laughs> oh my god i am literally like a kid in a sweet shop this is it's insane <laughs> 